I'm Emma, and this is Yav Sessions, and I'm here with Katie Kittermaster and her guitarist, Ben. Hello. Hi. Hey. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for uh, making the trek down, because I know it was <laughs> a bit of a mission. <laughs> in fact, quite a mission. Um, so when we normally have someone come in, I normally do a little bit of digging around online. Um, and the first Good, thing I noticed <laughs> is that um, you've played for 50 Cent and Ricky Martin. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was only about 12 years old when that happened. So to me, I guess I didn't really know who they were. Uh, oh, wow, awful okay. as it sounds. Um, <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, so I was asked to perform at this um, gala dinner for um, Global Gift Foundation, which oh. is um, a charity. Uh, based out in Dubai is where the event took place um, and yeah so I was about 12 years old I remember I covered um, Skinny Love by Bon Iver which has been a song that I've sang since I was about 10 years old and st still perform it occasionally at gigs um, and yeah it was a really good experience um, a very fancy red carpet got a dress made it was all very exciting um, yeah, I haven't really done anything since, like that since, to be honest. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, though, to be able to uh, have that accolade. Yeah, yeah, no, it was really good fun. So um, let's rewind a little bit. How did the whole music thing start for you? Um, I think what got me into music was actually watching Annie the Musical. Oh, right, um, okay. The film when I was about five years old. Um, and The original then, version. I'm yeah, saying. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just remember wanting to sit in a window and sing about my lost parents, and I remember that being the starting point. And start starting point, and that's really from then I've just sang my whole life. And I think it gets quite annoying at times at home, family, or shut up, you're always singing. But <laughs> it's all I want to do really. So I started playing guitar about two years ago, um, and I think if anyone asked, they'd probably say, be saying that I'd I've been playing for about. A few weeks, but yeah, I'm not very good at guitar. Um, and I'm I sure guess song songwriting I started about um, a year and a half ago, and I think playing guitar really helped with that. Um, and really, before I started songwriting, I'd really, really struggled with song, with how to do it. I hadn't really had any experiences that I wanted to write. So were you just singing covers until then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I knew that I always did want to write songs, and people have always been saying, "Come on, try and write something," because I think that's a really important part of being a musician is that you can write your own stuff as well. Um, and it wasn't until some nasty boy decided to break my heart and then the songs just came flowing out of me so it's all thanks it's all thanks to him to be honest but don't tell him that no you're still quite young so yeah. at what point did you kind of think right i really want to make the best go of this i possibly can uh like i said probably when i was about five years old i think it was one of those what do you want to be when you grow up a singer anything else no all i want to do is sing i just want to be on the stage and if it wasn't singing, it was dancing and acting. And I, I went to a place called Theatre Workshop for about five years and did all the auditions for adverts and all this sort of stuff. Just it's sort of been the only thing I've wanted to do ever, really. But I think it was about two years ago when I did start taking this um, a lot more seriously because I think the age that I'm approaching, 17, 18, 19, is a really key time for the industry. And so I just thought, right, we've got to give this our best go that we can. Um, and you've also had like a ridiculous amount of accolades. Um, I noticed that just this year, um, you've been in the finals for International Acoustic Music Awards, winner of budget music videos. Um, you're also a finalist in the UK songwriting competition, and that's just in 2018, and we're in May. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess like, how does that feel? And also like, when you continue with the music stuff, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure because you've been so successful until now with the award stuff? Um, I think it's just a massive honour that people appreciate the stuff that I write because I write it because I love to just write my own stuff and I, I find it's a, the way that I can express myself rather than talking to people I find it a lot easier to say if it's a difficult topic then I just prefer to sing it rather than to so say So we could have got you to sing the interview <laughs> <laughs>
cup of tea, you'll brush your teeth and maybe you moved on. Maybe you still miss my early morning smile, but maybe I'm just not the one. But I'm sleeping in your t shirt till the sun comes up, hoping that the morning brings you hope. Sleeping in your t shirt like you're here. My arms, like it's the only t shirt I own. I wake up every morning thinking of all the that you'll be. I'm just a silly girl with a dream. The stars, the moon, they make me think of you. Then they The songwriting competition how does songwriting get d- judged um, how does it work because i always think songwriting is an art like how you write songs will be different to say how ben writes songs yeah um so what makes an awesome song in your opinion <sighs> well i just always start i think i sort of look for the sort of hook of the song or like the main idea of the song if it's the t-shirt or the uh I don't know the kaleidoscope in one of my other songs is sort of like the main like the main point of what I'm trying to say, um, and then once I have that, get on the guitar, and then find a chord structure that I haven't used before or probably have used before because I don't have that, don't have that many options, um, and then I don't know most times it normally just all comes together once I have the main or the, like the first line or the main hook of the song, then. Luckily, it's all just sort of come together at once, to be honest. And then if it doesn't, I'll leave it for a few days and then come back and then hopefully the idea just sparks and just snowballs. Um, but I think for a good song, you've got to have something that's really catchy that people are going to remember um, and something that people can relate to, I think, is really, really important. Something that everyone can go, oh, yeah, I remember sleeping in my boyfriend's T-shirt or something like that um, in my song T-shirt or something like that, I think. I was, yeah, I think that's really important. Cool, good. Um, and in terms of, I guess, your songwriting process, we've obviously got Ben here now as well. <laughs> so how does it work with regards to, so you write the songs and then you bring them to Ben and say, right, this is what I want to do. Let's work together and make them sound awesome. How does it work? Um, so normally I'll write a song and then normally show my mum and my brother. And if they think it's okay and they think, yeah, I like this one, or if they don't, if they don't like it, then I go back and try and work on it and take their feedback and change parts. Or if I'm like, actually, no, you're wrong, 
I hmm. like it. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe Just ask a few a other people. Sometimes, I mean, mum's not so keen on some on some of the songs, but she's keen on others. So I don't know. Everyone has their differences. So if if they don't like it, I don't know. I show it to, show it to Ben. Show it to a few other people. Um, and then with Ben, we just I I'll just play the song, and then give him the guitar and the chords, and away we go. He's basically a magician of music. So wow, nice. Wow. Kind words. I wouldn't like to <laughs> <laughs> stop it. <laughs> um, in terms of like writing your music and artists that you are into that you think influence your music in some way, who would you say that would be? Um, definitely Gabrielle Aplin. I think she is an amazing artist. I think I love her words. So I aspire to be someone like her. I think in the music industry, um just her words are so raw and you can just I feel like you can relate to a lot of the things she says um definitely Ed Sheeran I mean it's a it's a classic really but some of his words are just great and all his songs are catchy all his songs are singles and hits so I think definitely him probably Adele for the same reasons and a girl wow, called no pressure <laughs> a girl <laughs> called Georgia Smith I really love her music I mean it's quite Ooh, different yeah. to the other three but um just really like her sound and her vibe, I guess. Awesome. And apart from people that break your heart, what else would you say <laughs> um, you take from as inspiration? Uh, people that break my heart or mend my heart is normally, ah, okay, normally the case. Nice one. Or, it's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, or just I think sometimes if I'm lacking sort of inspiration for a song, then maybe take inspiration, whether it's a film or something a friend's going through or something like that, or maybe even just use my imagination and sort of exaggerate something that's happened in life. Um, so some of yeah. them are fiction, not all fact. Well, I guess I think a lot of the time with some of the songs um, that I've written, it's sort of, it is based on what's happened to me, but it's me looking back and putting myself in shoes of maybe a year ago or two years ago. Um, and so it's not like how I'm currently feeling when I write the song, but it's sort of me like reflecting back, and like, oh yeah, I remember that time when I was really sad, sort of thing. <laughs> Um, so I tend to write about the same sort of thing. Is it normally when you're sad, not when you're happy? I think it's a lot harder to write a happy song. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just a really sad person, but it's really hard. Um, I do have a few happy songs, which is good. But uh, I think it's hard to make them sound not too cringy. So I think, yeah, I normally tend to write sad songs because... Yeah, I think a lot of artists would agree. A lot of yeah. like, yeah, same. you know, successful people would be like, yeah, totally. Yeah, but you know. I think also, when you're really happy, you're normally around other people, and I'm normally busy being happy and doing other stuff. When when I'm alone in my room, that's when <laughs> you're not really sitting there going, I'm so happy. I must but do also, something like, about this. But also, like a lot of a lot of songs, if you actually listen to them and break down the words, like they're actually sad songs, but they just sound really happy because of the tune or something like yes, a lot true. of lyrics to songs that sound really upbeat are actually pretty meaningful sad. And, yeah somber absolutely a lot of um songs also get used as an outlet for when you're feeling sad i think in yeah terms of definitely, like releasing definitely. emotion whereas when you're happy i don't think there's necessarily the need to do that in the same way yeah no definitely if i'm sad the thing the only thing you want to do is put sad music on which just makes you sadder so i don't really yeah, know yeah i don't I did, get that but. Somebody said you got a new friend Does she love you better than I can? There's a big black sky over my town I know where you're at, I bet she's around Yeah, I know it's stupid, but I just gotta see it for myself. And I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Oh, I'm right over here. Why can't you see me? Oh.
all dressed up and so out of line. Stilettos and broken bottles. I'm spinning around in circles, and I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Oh. Come on, the music dies But you don't see me standing here I just came to say goodbye And I'm in the corner Watching you kiss her oh. I'm right over here Why can't you see me? Oh The Alpha Sessions. You've obviously been going at this for quite a little bit and um, you've won some amazing, obviously, arcades which we've spoken about. Um, for someone that's just started out now, kind of doing what you were doing when you were five, I guess, <laughs> um, do you have any like top tips for them in terms of how to get some gigs, how to keep going, how to work, all that kind of stuff? Mm. Maybe a like, couple of pointers? I think you've just got to really put yourself out there, not be embarrassed about what other people are going to think, whether that's starting an Instagram account and just posting stuff and making sure you're using all the right hashtags and all that sort of stuff, which I hate. I hate anything to do with social media, really. Um, or if it's putting stuff off on YouTube or busking. Um, I'd say those are all really important factors. Just speaking to the right people, knowing where to look, um, if that's going on Facebook and looking at music groups where they have people that are looking for musicians to play at events or it's musicians looking for venues, whatever it is, or if it's guitarists looking for singers or vice versa, stuff like that. I think networking is really important. Now let's talk about, I guess, you and Ben a little bit. You guys have only known each other for a month and yeah. you're already playing like amazingly together. How did you guys meet um, and how did you guys realise that um, you guys could make a go of it musically? Um, well, we met through sort of a mutual friend who's also on the music scene. He's uh, an amazing pianist called Grant Sav. Um, and you guys have known each other for a while and mm -hmm. I'd only known him for about a year. Um, and I was looking for a guitarist because a lot of my songs are guitar based. So it's a lot more helpful to have a guitarist on the scene. Um, and so he put us in touch. We had sort of like a session, I don't know what you call it, sort of a rehearsal just to try stuff out. Um, and I think I instantly knew, to be honest. No. Yeah. I wasn't, I'm still not quite sure. <laughs> I'm still, you know, I'll let um, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I thought, I thought, we had the first session and within about 20 minutes we'd already got the first song down and sort wow. of, I think, I think it really helps that you're just an incredible musician, so I think he works well with anyone, to be honest, I don't think it's to do with me. Is it one of those kind of when you know you know situations? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think, Band I mean, at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think, um, I think you brought me some really well thought out, really well structured stuff. All your songs are, you know, I'm a fan as well as a, a colleague, you know, uh, you know, I, I like everything you've, you've been putting your name to so far. So like, you know, it's a real pleasure and it's not hard to, to do some good work mm. with you. You know, it's fun. Oh, that's so nice to hear. <laughs> um, Katie, you've also done a, um, a music video. Yeah. Um, 
what was it about that track that made you want to make a music video for it? Um, I think it just had some really good images through the metaphor, metaphors used and sort of the main idea of sleeping in your t-shirt. It was just sort of an easy, easy one to be like, yeah, I know exactly what I want to do with this because it was it was such a like real story. So I kind of thought, let's just do it how it happens. So in the music video, it kind of goes from sitting there thinking about the idea and wearing the t-shirt and then you're sort of trying out the song and then just getting ready to perform the song. So it kind of shows the process of how it really happened. How long did the process take? Of writing the song? Uh, of making the video? Um, we had a four hour slot and thanks to Budget Music Videos, I actually won a competition with them. So oh. it was sort of a free shoot, which was incredible. Um, and I wouldn't have a music video without them, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it was four hours in total and just shoot the song about 50 times um, with the song playing on speakers in the background, just sort of sort of singing, miming along um, for a few hours, which was really good fun. Did it make you want to make more? Yeah, I mean, it's quite a weird process because you're kind of like, there's cameras on you and you're sort of sat there like pretending to sing. It's quite a weird process because obviously we've all watched so many music videos yeah. actually being on the other side of it. It's a weird one. It was, yeah, but it was really <laughs> interesting. It made me thought, oh, this, this is, you just have to really throw yourself into it because otherwise you can just be really awkward and yeah. like, they're so doing different shots and clothes, like cameras, like right up here in your face. But yeah, you just have to throw yourself into it and just, yeah, just go with it. Would you make another one anytime soon? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I, yeah, I'd love to make music videos for all my songs, I think. It's really good for people to be able to see you as well as just hear you and, like, see what you're doing as well, whether that's just literally, like, live videos. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely important. You reach people in a different way. Yeah. You know, and, like, mm -hmm. touch people in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've also played um, quite a few festivals. Yeah. Any highlights? <laughs> Um, I think my highlight of 2017 was playing at the Big Day Out in Maidstone um, in Moat Park, which was um, an incredible opportunity for me, supporting Louisa Johnson and Diversity um, and various other people. So that was an amazing experience and just every, the, the audience were really well receptive. How well, do situations like that come about? Do you literally just get a finger one day um, and it just goes, hey, yeah. do you want to play? Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> I We got a call up on the Monday saying if I'd like to do it, and the gig was on Saturday. Wow. Um, so it was a pretty intense few days, but literally just turned up. I, we didn't realise how big the gig was, really. Um, so getting off on stage in front of 14,000 people was kind of a shock, but a good shock. But at least you um, didn't get that yeah. much time to get nervous, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> no. Yeah. I think that was definitely, I won't really ever forget that moment. It was really amazing. Do you still get nervous when you're on stage? Or is it kind of just a It thing depends. Like... It depends how well prepped I am. If I'm having a day where I feel like I'm going to forget the words and I'm going to be nervous that that's going to happen. But I think compared to how nervous I got when I was younger, I think I've kind of conquered it. Um, and just because I enjoy performing so much, I don't really think about getting nervous because I love being up there. <laughs> Baby
draws me close The burden my shoulders just can't hold Whatever I do, I still think of you And maybe dreams just don't come true So let me in And tell me about the places that you go to when you fall asleep Alpha sessions. Any uh, pre-gig rituals that you like have to do? Um, you have to get a get a straw and blow through the straw and just go up and down the scales. Get a vocal zone. I've never um, heard that before with a straw. <clears throat> yeah, it was a technique that my um, vocal coach uses the whole time, and people That's like cool. uh, Rita or a little mix. They all have the same vocal oh, wow. coach, and so we we're all there with our straws. <laughs> um, I don't know. Sp- I don't know the science behind it, but. Supposedly. Hey, if it works, why not? Exactly. Exactly. It's obviously getting your results. Yeah. Um, and what about in a dream scenario? Um, if you could play with anyone, if even collaboration, who would it be? Ben, obviously. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Can't take it. Well, no, because we play. We you'd be playing with me anyway. Yeah. So we've got to think fine. realistically. Well, it's a given. 
Let's think about this. Could be anyone, dead mm. or alive. Not the band as in they could be. Dead or alive. <laughs> 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 could be dead or alive. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Touring? I think. <laughs> I mean, any of the people that I've mentioned already, like, they're probably my top four favourite artists. Um, so, Ed, Adele, Gabrielle or Georgia, or maybe someone like Michael Jackson. I think it'd be quite funny. That'd be amazing. Because, I mean, our music is so different. It'd be kind yeah. of an interesting collaboration. Nice little duet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Throw some moves. Um, and in this gig with Michael Jackson or Ed Sheeran, Georgia Smith, <laughs> Gabrielle Laughlin, um, if you could have a dream rider... Um, what would it be? A micro goat. <laughs> okay. Definitely. I've literally been wanting one for about seven years. <laughs> so they are random. actually the cutest thing. I don't know if you've ever seen one that are like this big. And like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about you? I think two micro goats would yeah. be great. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so they could hang out together. Yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Or a miniature pig. We need two because then... Way. If we got to perform... They have each other. Yeah, they can hang out. Yeah. And won't disrupt the uh, show. What else would we need? Well, they might. Are they well-trained, micro goats? They will be. <laughs> okay. We need a handler <laughs> as well. It's getting what? expensive. That's all right. A handler. A Don't handler. worry about the expense. Okay, just crack on. <laughs> um, Jaffa cakes. Michael Jackson never worried about the expense. You're fine. No. He didn't. Never seen him with a goat, though. True. <laughs> Mike, you're getting Jaffa cakes. That's quite I random. I think so. One. Well, I mean, yeah. Just trying to think outside. That sounded like a micro <laughs> Right, okay. Uh, micro chair swivel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably all I'd need, to be honest. Wow, okay. You've just been asked the question of Dream Rider and you come out with micro goat and a packet of Jaffa cakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that springs to mind. Yeah. Um, Just the essentials. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> and what about what's next? Um, what have you guys got planned for the upcoming months? Um, just a couple of gigs, to be honest. Quite busy over the next few weeks um, with various radio interviews okay. and sort of other gigs. And then, uh, luckily, we're performing at the Big Day Out again this year, which will be really, really cool. Um, and a few other uh, local festivals in Kent, which will be really nice. Um, and then getting back in the studio in a few weeks' time, which will be really good. Is that for um, more songs? Yeah, so hopefully going to be able to release an EP, hopefully um, in the autumn time, which will Easy. be really cool. Yeah. Um, of just some of the stuff we've been working on. Um, for example, What Am I To Do, which we are playing today. Um, so that should be really fun. Amazing. Um, and if people want to go and find out more about you, where can they go? What can they do? You can go to my website at www.katiekittermaster.com. You can go to my Instagram at Katie Music. You can go to my Facebook at Katie Kittermaster. Can we just uh, note the thought that's going into this? <laughs> <laughs> you can go to my Twitter which is Kittermaster. And, yeah, you spell Kittermaster the way it sounds, so that's K-I-T-T-E-R-M-A-S-T-E-R. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I know it was a bit of a trick. No, thank um, you so much for having us. And um, hopefully we'll chat soon and definitely give your new EP yes, a play. Yes, sure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> a long time ago but I never seemed to let you go in my heart you're in my head they say I'm crazy get over it but I can never go through with it when I'm with him I want to be with you instead I know it sounds bad I can barely say it all out loud it's hard enough to just accept the truth I'm not over the way you smile no I'm not over the way you let me go so what am I to do? I'm not over the days you promised me Sat here wondering if you've been missing me too So what am I, what am I, what am I to do? What am I, what am 
my, what am I? You don't do much to forget the way you taste, you touch, and that pretty face, you know it's wrong. You've been like this for far too long. I feel bad. Never meant to say that out loud. It's hard enough to just accept the truth. I'm not over the way you smile, no, I'm not over the way you let me go. So what am I to do? I'm not over the days you promised me, so I wonder if you've been missing me too. So what am I, what am I, what am I to do? Oh, 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 Everything to get you off my mind And I've cried a thousand times about you Think I'm done trying and crying And lying to myself about you I'm not over the way you smile No, I'm not over the way you let me go So what am I to do? I'm not over the days you promised me So I wonder if you've been missing me too what am I to do? Oh, 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 o